sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Imagine you and a group of people were stuck on a deserted island somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and the actual island itself doesn't have too many resources. If I were to ask you what would happen after one month with the group and yourself, and what would happen after a couple of years? Well, one month, so after one month, initially the group itself might have tried to work together to get food and resources, but if there isn't enough, there's something called competition happening. In this case, you would have the ones who are most aggressive, and the ones who are best at getting food. These are probably the ones who are going to be able to survive, whereas the ones who are not that good at getting food might actually start to die. So the numbers of the people on that actual island will start to drop even after a month. Now what will happen after a couple of years? Well, after a couple of years, what you're probably going to see is either everyone actually has died. I know it's a very harsh example, and I'm sorry about that as well, but it's a very good example. But everyone would probably die, or just the ones who are, yeah, were the very most aggressive ones, so the aggressive slash best at finding food. Would have survived. Now, all the other ones would have died. So this is first after one month. This would be short term. The short term consequences, and after a couple of years, would be long term. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because dot point itself says describe and explain the short term and long term consequences on the ecosystem of species competing for resources. So yeah, our analogy or our comparison was with a person, a group of people stuck on an island after a a month, which would be a short-term consequence, would have numbers dropping, and a long-term consequence would be that some of the people might go extinct or might all die, and only the fittest will survive. And actually, so the resources of the island would go down as well, because we just get all different resources to, that we can find to make sure we can survive. But I'll go over this now. So this was what we're going to talk about in this video, this dot point. So describe and explain means we need to actually not just mention them, but say why that happens as well. The examples I'm going to go through are the minor bird, and so you got some of you might be familiar with the minor bird. The minor bird was introduced in a, to, into Australia in, nine, in 18, 1899, so it's actually an introduced species. And this is a graph, so we've got a number of animals on this side, or especially probably a number of birds more specifically, and the time and years on the horizontal axis. And the pink is a minor birds and the blue are the native birds. Again, minor birds are introduced species. So what happened? They, they both the minor and the native birds were competing for the same resources, especially they're competing for a space. So they're competing for a space for the nests. What happened when they were actually introduced is the minor birds are really aggressive and they they love to fight other birds. So they're really aggressive. So once they were introduced, they more or less took over. And this is 1900s, this is time and year, so after a while, they started to increase their numbers. And as their numbers increased, the numbers of native birds actually decreased, because native birds actually lost out, more especially small native birds. So you can say these are lost out, and your minor bird, birds won, and you can see that in the numbers. Numbers have been increasing for minor birds, and at some time, at some stage, it will plateau out, which means that they've reached their maximum amount for that environment, whereas what can happen with the other species it will decrease, and for some of the actual native birds, there's a threat of extinction. So we're not there yet, but at some point, the numbers might actually reach zero, so they might have become extinct, because they've lost the overall long-term battle. So this is a short-term battle. Short-term consequence is a decrease in numbers. So this is a decrease in numbers for the short-term consequence, but the long-term consequence could be Extinction. So long term could be extinction. And that could be one example. So it could be, you know, numbers decreasing and then extinction. But what can also happen is an example that happened with the Galapagos Islands. So the Galapagos Islands are part of South America. And what you can imagine, what I'm drawing here is our mainland. Mainland means it's a big part. So for example, you know, Australia would be the mainland. And then Tasmania would be island coming off. So the mainland is a massive part, land part, and then close by were these islands. And we had one type of finch, which was this one here, the first part, there was one finch here. 
and we have lots of different finches come off that one finch. But this one finch type used to live on the mainland here. But there was so much competition that what happened is some of the ones, in order to survive, they left the mainland and actually flew across to these islands. And then over time, because each island had different types of resources, what happened is they actually all became different types of species. So now we have lots of different types of finch species. And you're going to cover that much more in year 12 as well. But this is called divergent evolution. But the idea is that in this case, to be able to not to actually die, to be able to compete, they had to leave. So they f more or less fled. And they fled to different parts of the, of the area. So they were in the mainland. And then this one species of finch left the mainland. Quite a few, of them, not all of them, but quite a few of them. And they went to different pockets in terms of the islands. And the best adapted to those environments, the best adapted uh, members of that species, evolved into new kinds of finches. Right, so describe and explain the short-term and long-term consequences on the ecosystem of species competing for resources. So we said earlier, if we have two species competing for resources, then generally the, the numbers will decrease, especially for the one that is not that well adapted. That's the, the short-term consequence. But then the long-term consequence could be that they actually become extinct over a couple of hundred years or millions of years. Whereas what can also happen is if they want to compete, but they can't compete, what they could do is they could flee. They could flee to neighboring areas, so they inhabit a new area. And then over time, they change into new species. So these are two examples. And what ha so I'll also talk about what happens to the ecosystem itself. So if, imagine if you have lots of different, for example, in the ecosystems of these islands here. The islands might, might have been pure or you know, uninhabited at one stage, but all of a sudden there's lots of these birds. So obviously numbers, maybe numbers of prey would decrease. So whatever they're eating would might decrease. You know, you might have the actual islands become more damaged through these invasions. So you might have damage to the environment and depletion of resources. So this is what happens with not happen to the environment itself if there is an increase for competition. There will be so many things happening. The actual environment suffers by having you know loss of number of prey because they're all being eaten or having damage to their natural trees and everything else. And that can also happen. So, if, so yeah, these are the long-term, short-term consequences. The environment could itself become destroyed, or you could have extinction of species, or you could have some of the actual species leaving the environment and becoming new type of species in different environments. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.